All right, we're, we're recording. Please go ahead. Okay, so um, good morning. It's 10 o'clock in the morning on July 11, 2024, and I'm calling the Town Services and Outreach Committee of the Town Council to order. Uh, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, um, but then we're not meeting in um, a public setting, and so access is uh, electronic. I do want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded and that they should be aware of that. Um, I've asked the, the council president to join us, uh, Lynn, if you would like to, uh, you know, it's up to you because uh, what the agenda order is, is so we would do appointments uh, for the town, uh, the, the town manager first and then get to the waist taller. I'm here for the duration. So okay, please so, uh, do your agenda in order. Okay. So that is the agenda order for the day that we're going to um, do uh, handle the appointments first, and then um, we'll move from that to uh, the discussion of waste taller. I don't um, anticipate that we have anything to discuss uh, today under traffic safety uh, and profile, at least as far as the two um, pending issues of West Street and uh, um, the roundabout at Amity Street, because uh, we have not had reports back yet from either DAC or TAC. Um, and I think that uh, um, when we will under, un um, unanticipated business since it's not listed on the agenda. Um, just talk about uh, whether we need to um, cancel the next meeting um, because of uh, availability of staff support. So with can that... We, can we confirm that uh, people can hear and be heard? And did you want to take public comment? We will do public comment next. Um, but uh, let me first... Uh, Thank you for reminding me. Uh, let's make sure everybody can hear and be heard. Uh, so we'll go uh, with the uh, order of Bob Hegner. Present. Councilor Lord. Present. Councilor Ryan. Present. And uh, Jennifer Taub. Present. Okay, so then we have all present. So um, I guess the next item, the first item on the agenda after calling to order, which we've just done, is public comment. If there's any members of the public who wish to make comment, um, I invite you to please raise your hand and uh, we'll bring you in and try and keep the comments to three minutes and uh, Let's uh, proceed uh, by bringing uh, Tracy Zafian in. Thank you. Tracy, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Hi. So, uh, welcome. Yeah. And uh, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, go ahead and proceed with the comments. Hi, yes, um, I'm here to comment. Um, I am the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee, but I'm not speaking in that capacity today, just on my own accord. Um, so I just wanted to make a brief public comment and just thank TSO and the council for their support on some of these traffic safety and speed issues that have come up lately. That issue of chapter 17, I mean, chapter 90, 17C, you know, that had been stalled. I think it was on the last two carryover memos. So it was great to see it go through TSO last month and then also be supported by the council. I know that that doesn't mean that, you know, the speeds on our roads are changing right away, but it is definitely, I think, a very important first step. Um, 
with that, and, you know, there's also been support. Um, TSO has spent time, you know, talking about the school the speed zones and about um, safe routes to school and speeds near schools. Um, all of that support is very much appreciated. Um, with regard to Chapter 9017C, the DPW director, he had mentioned that the DPW is going to be looking into the history of the speed limits on different roads around town. Um, just to see where that new statutory speed limit would apply. Um, and when that's done, I do hope that there can also be, or maybe afterward, I hope that there can also be some broader and related discussions about other parts of town that may, where it may be appropriate or other roads where it may be appropriate to have um, different speed limits that are posted now. Um, my son is now 16 and he recently got his driver's permit as I've been practice driving with him around town. I'm really cognizant of the speed limits that are posted. And it really does seem like some of them, I mean, this may just go back in history, but some of them may be outdated. Some of them could be potentially unsafe. Um, TAC had previously raised the issue about on Triangle Street near the high school, it's 30 miles an hour and then it's 25 miles an hour for a very short stretch near the high school fields. And then it's 25 again and when you approach the roundabout if you're coming from Main Street. Um, and I noticed, for example, when I was driving with him because I want to make sure he's staying within the speed limit since he doesn't even have his license yet. But um, when you're leaving town and going south on um, 116 South Pleasant and then it becomes West Street, I noticed that right pretty close to where there's the new Amherst College Center on the west side of the street, the speed limit increases to 40 miles an hour going out of town. Um, which seems, I don't actually think cars are driving that speed there anymore. <laughs> um, but that's also going to be a big area where pedestrians are crossing with the new student center on that side of the street. Um, and then I also noticed if you keep going south, right, that there's another 40 mile per hour speed limit posted um, right before Crocker Farm, right? And again, we've raised issues about safe routes and having safety in the schools for pedestrians when you're anytime you're having any mid block crossing or anything that 40 miles an hour is a really fast speed limit. Um, so I do appreciate all the traffic calming measures and other things that have been done and that are still in progress. Um, but it seems like in some cases it may be appropriate to lower the speed limit. Um, so and I did want to just mention too, um, just because I've been looking into this for a variety of other topics, but um, you know, one of the things is that traditionally the speed limits have been set, like the engineering standard has been to set speed limits based on the 85th percentile speed of what vehicles are currently going. But the, um, the manual on uniform traffic control devices that came out in December 2023, you know, updated that and really said that engineers now should not just look at the 85th percentile speed, but they also should be looking at the context of where um, what roads you're on, whether there's pedestrian activity, bike activity, other land uses and so on. And so, you know, be very much more like a safe systems approach and look at the context. And so, um, you know, I hope that that's something that we can do throughout town. And um, I also have concerns about Northampton Road, which I know is a state road because that's also 40 miles per hour, but um, I can get in touch with the state over that. So, but thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Tracy. Uh... And the other person who has a hand raised is Darcy DeMont. Athena, you were able to make the switcher. Hey, good morning, Darcy. Good morning. <clears throat> um, I also wanted to really TSO for um, uh, their action at the last meeting. Um, that was refreshing to um, to get some forward motion going with the with the race taller initiative to uh, advise the town manager to um, put out an RFP. Um, I think that. You know that that isn't determinative, but would certainly be super helpful to uh, see if this is something that we really want to do. Um, uh, I would in reading the report <clears throat> going to the town council. 
um, you know, it seemed to be a thorough report, but it uh, it would I like the tone is a little uh, doesn't include as much of the benefits of what will be coming with this program. Um, I just want to remind you that we have these twelve downright organizations that fully endorse this. We've heard from the Board of Health numerous times. Uh, reminding us forward with this. Um, and um, uh, most importantly, the the climate and pollution benefits are are very significant. We expect that that doing this would reduce our trash um, by at least forty percent uh, and our climate emissions. And I think that, um, we don't want to be in the category of so-called washlands communities that allow the free reign to charge what they will and to uh, fail to reduce the the overall trash. So um, I I and fail to reduce our climate emissions. So I am again I laud Joe for moving this forward. Um, and uh, I will be in touch with all of our railway Amherst constituents to let them know um, that we've made a step forward. So thanks again. Well, thank you, Darcy. So I uh, don't see any other people asking for to make public comments. So at this point, I'm going to close public comment and. Uh, Turn the um, meeting over for a moment to uh, town manager so that he can present appointments. And uh, the way we've normally done this is to do them in segments according to the um, groups. And uh, Councilor Ryan, are you, are you prepared to make motions as needed? And we're um, so, Paul, morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking this on. Um, we have, I would do them in two groups. I think one is um, for the elementary school building committee and the Jones library building committee. Uh, we had had our interim um, co finance director, Jen LaFountain, serving in the function of the finance role on each of those committees with our new finance director, Melissa Z Zawadzki. Um, she is prepared to take on that task. Jennifer is happy to hand over the reins on those two committees. Um, so I ask for, I've appointed them to that committee and asked for your approval of those two appointments. Okay, so are there any questions for members of the committee? Hearing none, uh, George, do you have a motion? So I, am, I will move to recommend that the town council approve the town manager's appointment of Melissa Zawadzki, the finance director, to the elementary school building committee and to the Jones Library building committee um, for terms to last the length of the building process for both. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made by Councillor Ryan and uh, Bob Hegner has seconded the motion. Um, if there's uh, no one raising hand for discussion, then I'll proceed to vote. Seeing no hand, uh, Bob Hegner? Aye. Councillor Lord? Aye. Councillor Ryan? Aye. Uh, I'm an aye, and uh, Jennifer? Uh, I. Okay, and I have been. I was proceeding alphabetically by last name in case there's any history of what I was doing. Um, uh, so. Paul, you had a Thank second. you. So the next group is all reappointments. These are people who are already serving on committees. I think there's 26 names. Um, uh, so they are presented to you for reappointments. I can go through them one by one, but they're on your agenda, and I think you have the the memo as well. So why don't we just uh, see if there's anybody on the committee that has a question about any of the reappointments, um, if there's specific questions to pose to the town manager. 
Seeing none, uh, George, do you have a, it's going to be a complex. Well, like, it's just going to take a while. Um, so people might want to go get a cup of coffee, but um, I will go through this uh, all 18 and then in one motion, if that's okay. So I'm going to move uh, to, re to recommend that the town council approve the town manager's reappointments uh, of the following to these committees. First of all, to the Affordable Housing Trust, Allegra Clark, for a term to expire June 30, 2026, and Grover Wayman Brown for a term to expire June 30, 2026. To the Board of License Commissioners, Marion Walker for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee, Susan Suzanne, excuse me, Schilling for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Community Preservation Act Committee, Timothy Neal for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, Deborah Ferrara for a term to expire June 30, 2027. The Conservation Commission, Audrey Gadera for a term to expire June 30, 2027. And Michelle Labby for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Cultural Council, Christy Anderson for a term to expire June 30, 2027, and Eleanor Walsh for a term to expire June 30, 2025. Energy and Climate Action Committee, Donald Allison for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Historical Commission, Antonia Brillenborg for a term to expire June 30, 2026, and Michaela Rashnik for a term to expire June 30, 2027. The Human Rights Commission, Rizwana, uh, Rizwana Khan, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Local Historic District Commission, uh, Nancy Ratman, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. And Elizabeth Sharp, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Munson Memorial Building Trustees, Alexander Niefer, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Public Art Commission, Dara Berwad Nixon, Dixon, excuse me, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Public Shade Tree Committee, Shoshona King, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. And Henry Lappin, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Recreation Commission, Sanjay Awade, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. And Matt Kane, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Registrar of Voters, Jacqueline Gardner, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. To the Residence Advisory Committee, Anastasia Ordonez, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. And last but not least, to the Water Supply Protection Committee, Brian Yellen, for a term to expire June 30, 2027. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, a Final comments, questions, uh, seeing none, and then we'll go back to the same order. Bob Hegner. Aye. Councilor Lord. Aye. Councilor Ryan. Aye. I'm an aye, and Jennifer Tao. Yes. <clears throat> so it's a unanimous vote, and Thank you, Paul. Um, Thank you. I assume that it, um, there will be more appointments at future meetings. Yes, I just two things I want to mention. One is that there will this is the first group of reappointments. We have more appointments coming your way uh, during the rest of the summer. And secondly, there are there is an appointment that I intend to make probably later today that I will I will ask to have it put on the uh, town council's agenda. This is for the board of health. Uh, we weren't able to get the interviews conducted prior to your meeting. They're, they're actually happening later today. Um, but th that's more, there's a priority for that to make sure they inter they maintain quorum. So that will bypass the TSO, but go directly to the um, town council. If we make, if we, if we, after the interviews, we decide to make the appointments. Good. Thank you. And to understand that that can happen. Uh, Jennifer, your hand is... Um, yes, I just I, I think I said something at the council meeting, but just as the uh, council li liaison to the council on aging, um, just wanted to say that yeah, they're they just lost a quorum. So yep. okay, I'll thanks. That, yeah. And uh, Councilor Ryan, 
Yeah, just to express our appreciation as a committee, which I think Andy have already really done, but to Paul and to the resident advisory committee and to all the other staff members who do this job. Uh, it's an important one. Um, we rely, as we can see, heavily on citizen volunteers, and there's an enormous amount of work that Paul and his staff have to do to make this happen. And so uh, we're going to see more of this, obviously, over the next few months, but just a word of thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, and I think that that concludes it. We voted on both motions, and uh, so I think that we can proceed to go to the waste hauler discussion. And uh, at the last meeting, um, town manager was not present. We did pass a motion, as you know, um, to. Um, have uh, our to make a recommendation to the council about issuing an RFP following the discussion as described in the report that I have written. And uh, so the uh, I thought it would be helpful at the beginning to uh, see if the uh, town manager has anything that he wished he had been able to say at the last meeting or he feels it's appropriate to say at this meeting about uh, the recommendation that we've made and the next steps going forward. Sure, thank you, Andy. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't be at the last meeting. Um, so, but subsequent to that meeting, uh, Athena, who, who was present, and Guilford, who, who was present, and I have met to talk about what does it mean, what what was what what was the intention of the TSO committee, and so what thought it was important to have this conversation today to clarify my understanding and your understanding of what will go to the town council ultimately, and um, making sure that the um, that something is prepared for town council to act on if that's what the if the request is. Um, my understanding is that um, the council wants to move forward with an RFP um, for waste hauler services that would be contracted through the town to, for all for all residents. Um, to enact that, the town the, the town council would approve a bylaw that would. Uh, cover this this the work and that's been presented to the council a couple of years ago and then was represented i think at the end of last of at the end of 2023 um as a presentation to the council um as we look at what this takes and i and i've said repeatedly and i want to just re reaffirm that we do not have staff capacity to do this work so I just want to be very clear about that. We've been saying that from day one. This has not been a priority um, identified uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a significant way, and nor have we, we just don't, we have so many things on the plate of the DPW right now that they could not take this on. And we will need um, consultant support to do the, the complex RFP that we would use to solicit waste hauler bids. And I think that that was understood at your last meeting. I hope that was understood. So I was a little confused about exactly what what um, where the TSO was going to say, but I just wanted to clarify that as we start to, and, and I think that part of, if our goal is to make this a successful um, implementation, uh, there are steps that we believe that you will, that the town needs to take to make sure that it's successful. One is to make sure that there's clarity in what the, um, and what the program will look like. And I think there's a fair amount of that, but I just want to make there, I know there, are two, I think there are two different versions of the bylaw out there that I'd like to know which one we're talking about. Um, I think that in order for this to be successful, we have seen in other communities, and I, I often mention Pittsfield, that it is um, really important to engage the community in a very robust way. And I don't think this, we have really done that. I know there's been a survey done by a private advocacy group, but it hasn't been, we haven't really, and, and we haven't done a comprehensive engagement process because this affects pretty much every uh, household in the community in one to three family households, one to four, whatever it is. Um, and so I think that that's an important piece um, before we move forward. Um, and so when we put together an RFP, we need to know what are we asking people to bid on? So we need 
really, and I think there's a fair amount of work that's been put into that. So I'm, I think we're in some, there's a comfort range with that, but we'll need clarity as we move forward on this. So it's the public outreach. So we, we will need external help for the public outreach and the, um, and the developing the RFP. Um, when we chart this out and, and these things take time, like even doing that work, that's staff work that has to be done to develop the RFP. So we look at what's on our plate. We look at vacation schedules, quite frankly, a lot of people are taking vacations during July and August, and we want to be very clear with you what is achievable and, and, and what the time frame is. Um, and also the, with the goal being to ultimately um, come to the council for the funding that will likely be needed to implement this uh, or um, so um, and, and the goal I think would be to put that into the budget for FY26, which would be presented to the council on May 1st. So that's sort of the, the context in which we're working. Um, and to get there, we were looking at getting an RFP out early in 2025. Um, and, and even with that aggressive timeline and getting bids back, reviewing the bids, making sure it's what we want, and then um, looking at the finances and getting that to the council for to incorporate and getting it incorporated into our budget, um, I think that that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, and there are things that I'm probably forgetting, so Athena has raised her hand. Athena? Um, and I know Paul touched on needing consultants. Um, just to be clear about that process, we would need to issue RFPs for the two consultants and go through that process that staff would write RFPs for those two consultants. And we would come to the council for funding for those consultants before we are able to issue the RFPs. And then we would build the uh, program into the FY26 budget. Am I getting that right, Paul? Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. To so, yes. Two so our, yeah. So our anticipation is that we would bring a, we don't have money to do this. Um, so we would come back to the council, you know, September, October for an appropriation request um, to put money to do the consultant work um, to, to move this forward. So um, let me start with uh, just questions to Paul about uh, and to Athena about what has been presented so far. That's all right. So you mentioned two consultants. Um, it sounds like one of them would be uh, focused on outreach and one of them would be focused on creating the RFP or just clarification on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you know one for sure is an RFP. Yeah, one for sure to develop the RFP, and that's a different skill set than someone who would actually be able to do outreach to the community and to educate people about what's coming down the road. Because I think there hasn't. I think if you talk to your neighbors, you say you this know what's coming down. Of me. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, Paul. Where are you? I don't know um, if it's I this don't know is it's... actually the town services and outreach committee. Um, we are charged, and I'm winning. Yeah, sorry. George, we're having problems with your connection at this point. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, is it any better now, or is it still bad? It's okay. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I just. Maybe this is not the time for this discussion, but one thought immediately came to my mind that, um, you know, this is essentially our job to reach out to the community and, and through a series of, of meetings and explain to them what's what's coming, what's happening. Um, do we need a consultant for that? And the answer may be obviously yes. I'm just asking, but I, I would think at first that that we don't need one consultant to help us create the, the, the RFP. Well, I think we would come to you in the fall with what we think would need to happen on that end. And mm -hmm. um, in terms of outreach, um, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you why I'm concerned about this. One is I don't think, I think there's a lot, a lot of folks who, this is gonna change how almost everybody in town does what they do now. 
right? And you're going to be asking them to term, terminate contracts and that they have with current haulers. They may have, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of, it, it's an iterative process that's going to have to happen. And also as we, um, you know, I, I think you can't over communicate on something like this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, you know, we've learned a lot by setting up a, a new department with the Crest department. And I think um, more putting more work up front is to the, to the council and to the, to the residents and to the um, the town's benefit. And I think also you might get feedback that might influence what you decide. I see Athena has her hand up. Andy. Yeah, Athena and then I have just thought, but go ahead, Athena. So uh, when we spoke about this, we recognized that TSO had talked about doing some outreach, um, doing evening meetings, and so on, but our conversations were, was that we were gonna need a much more robust outreach effort and that's beyond the capacity of either this committee or our current staff. Um, so really getting out into the community and engaging community members. I think, um, you know, assuming that people will be aware of what TSO is doing and attend evening meetings is not adequate if we want the program to be successful. Jennifer? Okay, so I just, <clears throat> I'm trying to see the t visualize the timeline. So we can be, the the community outreach is going to happen over a, a period of time. I mean, like we understand that, you know, if we start the ball rolling with retaining the consultant to draft the RFP and kind of oversee that process, you know, it'll be a matter of year, you know, two, two years, maybe three years before the program you know, we actually have the program in place. And the, so can we be doing the R, going along the RFP process, you know, from the very beginning, including retaining the consultant mm -hmm. to, to handle that while we're doing the community outreach, which will, you know, happen over a good year, I would think. Yeah, so so it's a really good question. I think what, the way we envisioned it is that we would begin working once the council votes on the RF, it's actually an RFQ to get the consultants in. Um, we would come back once we have that RFQ ready to go, we would come back to the council for appropriation probably in the September, October. We'd hope that, that that consultant would be able to do the work before the end of December, going out to bid for the RFP in January of 2025 um, with the bids coming back during the, you know, in the next, the first three months, of the first quarter of that year in time for us to build it into the budget. What most of the haulers have said is that they need at least six months, probably a year to set up to be able to come in. So I think the earliest that we could um, look at would be in January of 2026. I think um, that's the earliest that we we think as we project out that we could see this contract initiating, just given if we, if we, if we have a money in place on July 1 of 2025, that would be six months. Um, and that's an aggressive timeline. I think the haulers I've talked to informally have said they need a year to secure trucks and stuff if they're new to town, basically, right? But it could be less. It's a, it depends on the hauler. Yeah, the one comment that I had uh, said I would be making is that uh, Mass DEP has the municipal assistance coordinators, which uh, they work together quite a lot, as I've heard in various reports and meetings. And uh, I would question that I would ask our um, uh, regional coordinator, Susan, Susan White, and um, ask her to consult her colleagues is what are communities that have changed from in in recent years from a subscription service to a contract service and uh, what has been the outreach process that has been used and what has been successful. Uh, I, think that we, uh, I, I would hope that we take the opportunity to use that resource to learn about the experiences of other communities that DP has worked with and helped through this process. So that was the additional piece that I would have. Um, 
So I think that that's uh, part one of the discussion to have for today. The other thing is that uh, we made a recommendation, uh, it was unanimous, to do something. Uh, but it does, you know, the question of uh, when it goes on the agenda for the council meeting and what the council might need is something that I thought we, would, we might want to be able to uh, ask uh, the council president if uh, she has given thought to any of those questions. So if you don't mind, Lynn, and if you have any thoughts, I certainly would like to have you share them. Um, thank you. Uh, let me just say that right now, this is on the agenda for Monday. We're not posting that agenda till after this meeting uh, so that collectively we decide, is this the right time to bring it forward and do we have all the information available? Um, as I looked at this issue, and I, um, you know, I don't attend all your TSO meetings. I did attend the last one. Uh, and you know, I was on the council that did the referral um, to uh, TSO back in 2022. Uh, and um, just today reviewed the outstanding presentation that was put together by the sponsors. Um, you've spent a lot of time on this. My goal as a president of the council is always to make sure that we're ready to bring it to the council in a way that it moves it as you as a committee want it to move. And so um, part of the questions I started asking Andy, uh, in addition to his report was, are there additional pieces that we should make sure people have seen? Remembering that this is a council that includes four counselors who have not, who were not on the council in August of 2022, okay? Um, it includes nine counselors who were, but not all of us have, you know, steel memories. Uh, so I wonder if, you know, for instance, you've talked about state kind of guidelines, if you will. You've talked about the waste hauler bylaw that presently exists. And some people in on town council probably don't even know what that existing bylaw looks like. And then you've talked about um, this proposed new bylaw that has, you know, all three components, including compostables, and then pay as you throw. So it, it is, when we do council meetings, I look at it as not only an opportunity to um, educate the council and to get the decision from the council that the committee is looking for, but I also look at it as an opportunity to really re-educate and educate again, if you will, um, the public. It's kind of like a way of opening it up. So um, I wondered whether or not a, um, a slide presentation, it does not need to be anywhere near as slick and beautiful, and I don't mean that negatively, the slide presentation that was done in 2022. But it, the real question for me is, what do we want to make sure that the can we anticipate the questions of the council and what do we want to make sure we're ready for on Monday? And if we're, if the committee is comfortable with that and after our discussion today, then we'll go ahead with it on Monday. And otherwise, you know, the next opportunity would be August 18th, which is our meeting in August. Um, so that's 19th, 19th. 19th. Thank you. 18th, I guess is Monday, uh, Sunday. Uh, 19th. So um, it's really, you know, you've done a, an amazing amount of work. This has been a topic that has been hanging around. And I, I mean that in a uh, both positive way, but also a way of, you know, hanging around gets frustrating. And how can we move it forward? So that's my reason for wanting to be here today and um, to talk about how we bring it to the council to a uh, in a manner that moves it forward, which is what I'm hearing the committee really wants to do. So thoughts from the committee about, and when I 
Colonel Council Ryan and ask Athena since uh, she's also indicated an interest, but Council Ryan, you had why, why don't we why don't we go to Athena first and then, then I, we can start our discussion. Um so unless yeah, let's go to Athena first. I'm just wondering if we can clarify the timeline for the development and approval of the bylaw. There's a question about that out there. Um have you created any kind of document that you put together on it, or do we just have the, because um, you have presented it verbally as to what, what your thoughts were. We could cut through it again and try and just do it ourselves right now if we need to. Are you speaking to staff or the committee? I uh, was speaking at this point to the staff. Um, so we had discussed um, going through the RFP process before the council approves the bylaw because some of the information that we gained from the RFP could um, have an impact on the language in the bylaw. So that was our thinking, but I'd like to, you know, hear from the committee and make sure that that's understood by members of the public as well. And I think that was what we understood as a committee at the last meeting when we voted. I'll let others speak for themselves, of course, on this. Um, but that was uh, with my understanding of the recommendation that we'd received from the superintendent of public works uh, that uh, an RFP would inform the bylaw uh, development uh, and uh, therefore, it's the uh, approach to that we would take. Councilor Ryan. I have the same understanding, um, but I'm also trying to anticipate questions that counselors might have. And one of them would be, do you have the cart before the horse? Um, why are you going off to an RFP um, before you actually have the bylaw uh, in shape? And I think Athena has given, I think, the, the outlines of what would be my response. And so maybe it's not going to be such a big issue, but I would think one objection or concern would be, uh, you know, why don't we have the, the bylaw set first and then we go off for an RFP to, to match the bylaw. Um, as Athena pointed out, I think we're still looking for information um, and we don't seem to be able to get it except through an RFP. So we need that information in order, I think, to finally craft the, the bylaw we want and the RFIs weren't sufficient. And uh, so I think that's the answer. Uh, I don't know what others think, whether they think this is gonna be a problem with the rest of the council or not. Um, the other quick point is that of course, we still don't actually have, as Paul pointed out, we still don't have a bylaw. Um, we have one in the uh, transition memo, which still has the errors in it. And then we had, so we also do need to just hopefully today establish what the document is that we're going to present to the council um, and have it uh, so that we at least know what we're going to see on the 15th. Uh -huh. Did you call me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I agree with George. I think, um, so one of the first questions, I, I think we need to go to the RFP is proceeding asking the council to approve the bylaw because the council is going to want to know how much this costs before they approve the bylaw, they're not going to commit to a town contracted system. I mean, they're going to ask what the cost is. And this is really the only way we can provide them with that information. So I, I think that's also why we're asking them to advise the town manager to for the town to issue an RFP before we approve the bylaw. I mean, we if the if they're comfortable approve, I bet that's my sense is that they are going to really want to know what the cost is. Um, so with the two versions of the bylaw that are floating out there, well, one is not floating. One is actually what was referred, the council referred to TSO. The other, the the part of that that concerns me, I think it's, I think the revision goes into provides counselors with more detail, which is helpful, but it also leaves the option open. It says, well, we might contract out and we might not. So the, the point of this is that we want to move to a town contracted, that's part of the point system, because all the experience of other municipalities is that that's 
how you can have a competitively bid pay as you throw fee structure that in turn will reduce the trash that individual households produce. So again, I think the reason for going out to RFP is so we can provide the council with the financial information that they're going to want to have before they approve the bylaw. Paul? Well, yeah, so I think when we talked about this really is kind of a chicken and egg situation because you need the information from the bio, from the uh, RFP to make an informed bylaw, but you need the information in the bylaw to do an RFP. So we don't know if the council, like one of the callers said, we would want you to close the landfill or we won't bid. I think it is almost to that extent. So are you going to keep the landfill open or not? That's a fundamental question um, of how, how a bidder would price their product. So I think there's some basic questions. And I think that's where our sense was we need you may have a sense of that yourselves and that may be sufficient, but also we don't, I don't know what the community thinks about that. Um, and if that's, so I think we will need to know when we, before we go out an RFP, is the landfill going to be operational or not, or the, I'm sorry, the transfer station going to be operational or not. So I, I think that's why we're sort of walking up together on, on both of these things. I think it's a, uh, glad you brought up that one example. We, uh, as sponsors, I have to always be careful as to which hat I'm wearing when I'm speaking, but the original proposal and in both bylaws, it has sort of the core, three core pieces. One is a town contract system in order to uh, have better management of the system as a whole. Second is pay as you throw, uh, not necessarily meaning plastic bags, but in the broader sense, the DEP now uses pay as you throw, which is that you're uh, pricing in accordance with the amount of uh, trash that a household is putting into the uh, stream that goes to landfills or incineration. And third is uh, composting because of all of the benefits that it poses. I think that those core pieces are recognized in both versions of the bylaw. And so the some of the detail, there's more detail in one than another. And the second one that was uh, Produced by a member of the last TSO, uh, but was never voted on by any for TSO, either the last one or this one. Um, we would need to go through that with greater care before we were ever, we would be able to say that this is something we pose as it is written. Um, and the other one, I uh, feels uh, created a framework that didn't have sufficient detail in it. Uh, so I think it, it does call for work, uh, but adding the piece that you just added about whether or not we keep the uh, transfer station open uh, for, for public use is uh, certainly one of those possibilities. And then the other is this question of if any of the components of the system turn out to be the price points that uh, drive up costs or affect costs in, in a particular way, we won't know that without the RFP. Okay. So that's, uh, Councilor Ryan, I'm back to the role of my role as chair and Councilor Ryan. So I think today we really have to decide for Lynn's sake, for the sake of our colleagues, for Paul's sake, uh, on the 15th, we have to decide what we are putting in before the council as the bylaw. And we have to be, I'm looking at what I assume is the, I am really confused, but I'm looking what proposed amendment, general bylaw 3.3, .3, right, in the packet, um, it has only uh, five lettered sections. It's, it's only two pages. Um, and the last section begins, starting in January 2024, the town shall either provide directly 
or through a contract with one or more waste haulers. Mm -hmm. So right away, there are a whole host of issues there. So am I looking at the wrong document? So then let's put the right document on the screen so we can look at it together and make sure that this is what we want to present to the council because that's what they're going to zero in on and they're going to have questions about. So this document that I'm looking at is not the document we want to present to the council. The document we want to present is in the transfer mem in the uh, transition memo. Just help me. I I, I just we yeah. need we can't. Yeah, go let's go back to what TSO what the council referred to TSO. Well, let's put it. Somebody, please put that on the screen or tell me where it is in the packet. Is it in the transfer memo? It was originally presented to TSO back in 2022 is the one that you were referring to. It's essentially two pages. That's right. But that's not the one that you are planning to present to the council. I'm not sure where at this point we haven't. We're not even going to present anything. Maybe there won't even we be. A we, we as a committee don't have anything to present. And of course, sort of get back to this chicken and egg question. They're saying uh, we have the outline of the issues that need to be considered, but the detail as to whether um, how it's presented may depend upon the RFP response. So yeah. a counselor, I'm sorry, if I may continue just for a second. So a counselor on the 15th uh, preparing for that meeting will not be looking at anything that is a bylaw proposed. They're just going to be looking at your memo and our advice, which is that Paul proceed with an RFP. Um, isn't that going to be a problem, or is it? I mean, they're going to right. What's going to guide this this individual or individuals when they do the the RFP? What, what are they going to use? Aren't they going to use some kind of of draft uh, version of the bylaw as as guidance? Um, and I, as I, if I were a counselor new to all this, I'd want to know what exactly are the parameters. Some of that is in your memo, and it's an excellent memo. Is that sufficient? Is that all we need? Um, and we're just not going to get into, you know, what 3.33 actually is, because, in fact, we don't know what it is yet. We, we don't have a document yet. Jennifer? Yeah, <clears throat> the initial bylaw didn't have any ex the, what was referred from the council to TSO was a very short, I'm trying to call, find it now, it's been through, that just said. In the packet, it reads waste bylaw motion 2022. It's in the packet. And it's short, it's two pages, and it has some issues, some problems with it, that if we put it in the pack, in the, in the packet for the 15th, there'd be a whole host of questions. Are you looking at the carryover memo? Uh, because no, no. that is no. provides explanation, which is more detailed than what the council right. referred to TSO. Right. So the carryover memo has at the end of it. Right. The purpose of this bylaw is to, and that's not what we... Right, in the carry memo, exactly. That's not what so was. We have, right. So let me go, let me try and find it. Keep talking, I will. I mean, I, I don't want to. Well, I have the, the both documents on my screen at the moment. And the uh, carryover memo document is much more detailed, much longer. And it also has errors in it that haven't been corrected. <laughs> um, we just need to be clear on what it's going to be in front of our colleagues on the 15th, or if we're ready to do that. If we're not ready to do that, then we need to call a halt to this. And we, unfortunately, would need to go back and decide before we put our colleagues through this exactly what it is that we're asking them to um, to ask Paul to look into. Because um, that's looking, I, I, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I think that the, the report that 
is drafted and was for the committee does not assume the date on which there will be council action. It is a recommendation that there be council action, but we can just today um, make uh, pass a motion saying that we recommend that this not be placed on the agenda until the August meeting so that we have time to uh, prepare uh, and address some of these issues. So what is before you now, whoever put that on the screen, is the um, bylaw that was originally presented to the council and therefore was referred to the committee for consideration. And as one of the, co uh, speaking as one of the co-sponsors, it was my view that we needed to make a presentation that it was a, um, a good starting point for the committee to work with, but that I was assuming as a co-sponsor that the committee was going to work on the bylaw itself and that uh, there were things that were not in the uh, presentation. The second one, uh, is a much more detailed one, which includes significant definitions. And I think that's what's now in the, that I presented at the last meeting. Uh, but that, you know, we, we as a committee this year, or the committee that existed last year did not discuss it or vote on it, and uh, it would be very unusual to say that we are presenting something if we haven't gone through it to discuss it. Uh, Jennifer? What, <clears throat> what we did at the, the last TSO meeting, I thought we, we agreed that we, to get the, to go to the next step, we needed to issue an RFP to, to get the info and then to know what our options were and how much it would cost. I mean, not just our options. We know that we want, <clears throat> um, we want to pay as you throw fee structure. We want, we want the option for there to be compost pickup townwide. And then we want it to be competitively bid to get the best price that we can. So, having a competitively bid contract with a pay as you throw fee structure <clears throat> would reduce cost and hopefully and would reduce trash that's produced and then to have universal curbside compost pickup would help us would reduce what even further we send to the landfill so i thought we voted to go back to the council and we can make a presentation, you know, on Monday of why this, what the goals of this program that we're recommending are, and that we would would like to go recommend that the town manager issue the RFP so we can get the information we need to make a decision. And I guess while this is happening, we can be doing community outreach. So it, it just see, it, it, I, we're trying to, and as George said, as someone kind of coming in on this, who fresh eyes that we need to move this forward to the next level. We just sort of seem to be on this, you know, like loop that we can't get off of. That's all right. So what it seems like we are saying to our colleagues is that we really haven't been able to fashion a bylaw for their review and approval at this stage because we lack certain information that we believe can only be gotten 
through this RFP process, which has to be undertaken by Paul, is going to require, require staff time and money. And so what we're really looking for from our colleagues is their agreement with us that this is something that should be done for the reasons that Jennifer's already and we've others have mentioned, and that would be the focus of our presentation. But if one of our members said, well, what about 3.33? And you know, we would simply say at this point, uh, we haven't been able to uh, craft that document to the satisfaction of the committee, let alone to the council, because we lack certain information. So we're asking you to let Paul find out the answer to these questions. So the question then seems to be to the council, do you think this is important enough that town resources, town time, um, money should be expended on. And if they say yay, then Paul will proceed along the timeline that he sketched. <clears throat> and if they say no, then we're at, we're, at stand, we're back to where we started. Or maybe we're done. Um, I hope they will say yes. I'm just trying to anticipate objections or concerns. Um, and the one is that we have these two different versions, but I think we're just going to say what I just said. We're, we're not ready to present it, and that's, here's why. So let us, let's do this so we can then come back to you with something concrete. Mm -hmm. Will that fly? <laughs> Maybe we'll find out on the 15th. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if I, you know, I don't sit on this committee, um, but I sit on the council, and one of the things that I would want to know is well then basically you're talking about a bylaw that has the following elements in it even though you haven't written that bylaw and based on those elements we want to go out with an rfp um i'll come to my question about that in a moment that will allow us to answer questions like, what is this going to cost the town? What is it going to cost me as an individual? Okay. Uh, and, and any number of other questions that might be out there. So in many ways, that is an assumption that that's based on an assumption that this is the bylaw you're pursuing. Okay. So my question would be, we're not asking the council to adopt a bylaw because that bylaw raises too many questions. And in order to get the questions answered, we need to go out with an RFP. That's so in some ways, I would prefer that the bylaw be have have been discussed a little more thoroughly in the in the committee even though you're not bringing it forward to the council for adoption, you're bringing it forward to the council as the basis for which you want to go out with an RFP to answer the questions that you as a committee and those of the rest of us on the council would like answers to before we are willing to adopt the bylaw. Does that I mean, we can present to the council the original bylaw with the caveat that we will be, um, you know, adding to it as we get information from the RFP. Oh, yeah. I think one of the questions that we had yesterday when we discussed this was, does the council want the town to the, the town manager to proceed with an RFP based on what's in the bylaw now, or are there different criteria that the council wants to go out with an RFP, or do we want an outreach? Mm -hmm. um, do we want that RFP to be guided by some of the outreach that we conduct? Do you want to do outreach first and help that inform what goes in the RFP and bylaw, or? Does the council feel that they already know what they'd like to see in the <clears throat> RFP? And if that's not in a draft bylaw, then I think that needs to be incorporated into a council action to recommend the count the manager go out for an RFP. 
Um, Paul, please let me know if. No, I, th I think that makes sense. I, I think we're seeking more clarity from the council on what you want. Um, and then we mm. can produce the, the, hopefully produce the product that you need um, to make an informed decision. So I guess my question would be, um, what is to be gained by taking this um, to the council next week's meeting? And what are the risks of taking it to the meeting next week? Are there, a, are we providing enough of a presentation to make them feel uh, that this <clears throat> um, basic structure that we're talking about is the way to proceed or do we need to pro be providing more in order to create that enthusiasm that would be necessary? Uh, and if so, uh, would we have more time to make, prepare that kind of presentation if we put it off and just treated this first round as a committee report, but not a request for action. Jennifer? Yes, yeah, so I actually wanted, I had a question based, uh, maybe it was uh, what Lynn said before, but if we're gonna, if we wanna do more outreach, the town doesn't have the staff to do that. So, we, right, we'd have to retain a consultant to do that work. So, so how do we get that rolling? What council action do we need to make that happen? I mean, I feel like we can't really, <clears throat> we, we need council action to move forward, but we feel that we don't have enough information to take it back to the council. That's, <clears throat> so I'm, I guess I'm throwing out there if we if staff time or a consultant needs to be retained mm -hmm. any of this how do we get that to happen without going to the council first well let's keep going uh, Paul so we can't do an RFQ for consultants unless we have money. Um, and so that requires a council action. So, and what we're saying, what I've said earlier is that we would bring that action to you in September, October timeframe when, when free cash is certified, um, hopefully that as early as October, I think. Um, but that should give us time to get it done. That, you know, the RFQ process can be a month more, um, but, you know, that, that will, but drafting the RF, P is is a task. It's just you know it depends. It, I'm not sure what the timing is on it, quite frankly. Um, but our goal would be to get it done in January, and so we can go out, turn it around in January. Um, but again, I think the more inform the more clarity the council provides, and I think you know it might be wise for the this committee to spend the next meeting just working through the bylaw. What is the bylaw that you're talking about? because we have two different versions out there and George is mentioning some typos, like let's get something that's ready for prime time. And then, and that starts to get, that provides more clarity. It doesn't delay anything by doing that because we're not going to be able to move forward on an RFQ. We'll be working on the RFQ documents, no matter, you know, assuming the council moves forward on it, we can get that prepared, but we're going to need the money before we do the RFQ. Uh, Lynn? Yeah, um, I actually, I want to build on something Paul just said, because it was really why I raised my hand. And that is that it does seem to me that by having the committee spend a meeting going through the RFP drafts, I mean, I'm sorry, the bylaw drafts, okay, you at least will have the opportunity to shape and raise all, most of the questions you can anticipate the council and the public will want to know. And by not going through that, you actually might miss something that later on you would say, you know, damn, I wish we had asked that in the RFP. So it, it's almost like 
use the opportunity of time um, to um, raise questions that you need answered and that the public and the rest of the council need answered in order for us to move forward with a bylaw. So that's, that's all. Tina? I, I have a question about this outreach component and I'm, I feel like I'm harping on this quite a bit and I, I'm not sorry, <laughs> but um, I, I think the committee, it's like George mentioned, the committee is, has a outreach component. And one of the things the committee can do is recommend the council, ask the town manager to hire a consultant to begin that outreach effort. But the question is, do you want the outreach effort to inform the next steps the committee takes in terms of developing the bylaw and the RFP? Or do you feel like those questions are answered and you want a consultant to just inform, focus on information to the public as this program gets rolling? So if it's the former, this committee can recommend the council take that action on Monday and that consultant can focus on information, getting information from the public that would inform the next steps of the process. And if not, then I think that um, having more discussion about what the committee wants to see in the in the bylaw and the RFP for the waste hauler would be the next step. Jennifer? I had initially raised my hand because I did have some comments about the report, but I guess we'll get to that later. The report that, right. so it sounds like the report's going to go to the, that you prepared will go to the council on Monday, even if we're not making the recommendation and asking for a vote. Is that correct? I think that's a discussion we'll have in okay, a minute. So but, uh, I had suggested that uh, at a minimum, we should at least be presenting in um, a, the report in some form and having the opportunity for the council to ask questions as it does at the end when we do committee reports at every meeting. Right. So if I have a couple of comments about the report, I'll get to that yeah. later. But I guess now I had my hand up about this, but I'll respond. My feeling about what Athena just asked is I think, I, I don't think I, I think the community input outreach to the community can happen as we're going forward if the council votes to proceed with the RFP, whether we wait until the August 19th meeting to ask the council to do that. But I think we that's the way I would like to see it, or we'll spend another two years kind of doing outreach and not really moving the program forward. Ryan. Yeah, um, we've shown that we're good at, you know, sort of just continuing to talk. Um, and uh, I've not been involved in this for the past two years. I've been a bystander. Now I've been involved for six months. And I have to say I'm pretty frustrated. Um, I may be the only one. That's fine. I, I can understand what needs to be in the minority, but um, what more discussion do we need um, in terms of, we, Jennifer's laid out, we've laid out the basic components of what we think the town should move towards. Um, I understand and I share to some degree the concern that we've got two different plan laws and they're not in agreement and there might be merit, I hate to say this, but there might be merit in us discussing at another meeting, hopefully the next meeting, going through them and figuring out which one is actually the one that we're going to put in a packet for the council and anticipating some of those concerns and questions. Um, so maybe that's what we have to do. I The outreach part, again, I'm more sympathetic to Jennifer's perspective. We've had, we've had two years of input, two years, I mean, you know, Yes, we want to hear what the public has to think, but we need to present them with something that they can sink their teeth into. I don't think we want to have a public outreach process 
where we start all over again and say, well, what would you like? And somebody says, well, I like the transfer station. I mean, I personally, I would say transfer station is fine. I don't, I don't need any of this. I personally don't need any of this. What value is that? In I mean, so you get 50 people to say that. I mean, I think we as a, as a committee, I think, have come to the conclusion that this is something the town should move towards for the sake of the planet, for the sake of a whole host of good reasons that have been spelled out repeatedly. We're not going to discover any new reasons when we discuss this some more. Um, yes, we could take some time, one more meeting, to get clear on the, the actual bylaw, which is not actually a bylaw because we're not we're not proposing one to them yet. But anyway, and we can anticipate some questions. But for outreach, at this stage, what we need the council to do, I think, is to have Paul go out and get an RFP. We thought, some of us thought maybe the RFI would give us answers. It hasn't. It's given us a little bit, but not enough, mm. nowhere near enough. It looks like this is what we have to do if we're serious about going forward. So for me, the question to the council is, Are you? do you see this as a priority? We as a committee, I think, majority of us, I think, think it is a priority that we need to, to work on and move towards. We need to know from the council that they agree with us. If they don't, then as we said, that we go in a different direction. Maybe that's the end of it, but we think it's a priority. We think the town should act. That requires Paul doing something. It requires some money being set aside. Yes, we could spend one more meeting going through the two bylaws and figuring out which one is, I mean, right and fine. And then we'll, that'll be sometime in August 18th or 19th, whenever it is, that it'll, it'll be another council meeting. Um, I would really like to hear from the council on the 15th, whether they we they think we're headed in the right direction or do they really think that this is just too much or whatever? Um, because the report I think is saying, we need to do this. We need the town manager to proceed. So please tell him to do that. Do people want to have another meeting? I guess the question is next meeting, do we want to have another meeting on going through these two bylaws and just figuring out yeah, I have just thought about that, but um, Athena, have we had any experience or do you have any experience that you know of from other communities of um, how a consultant would work with the council and the committee to do the public outreach and to get public comment back? Uh, and, uh, or is there anything like the CRC experience with the uh, by with the bylaw regarding um, inspections. Did we did we learn anything there? I think there are a variety of ways of getting out into the community. Um, I I hear what George and Jennifer are saying that you feel like you have the information you need and you're ready to move forward to the next step. So um, if that's how the committee feels that you have the information and you know what you'd like to put into the um, the bid for um, the waste hauler, then I think that it should be part of the council action. Um, if you're not looking for a, an outreach effort that will inform those decisions. Lynn? Um, having spent much of my career going out and seeking public opinion, um, there's lots of ways to do that. And in fact, consultants are usually quite um, expert at that. Uh, we did it when the recreation department went through a whole planning process. We did it with uh, designing, I think it was one of our parks. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to seek out focus groups and get public opinion. I, I still come back to the fact that I think as a council, people will be more receptive if you say, this is the program we're proposing whether or not 
that's this bylaw or this bylaw, but this is the program we're proposing. And we need more information in order for us to decide with your with the council decide whether or not they would like to proceed with that program. And then once that program is agreed to, then you write a bylaw to fit that program. You, it seems to me like you have a program you've decided on. And I, but I, going back to the public opinion, yes, there are consultants who do public opinion processes in any number of ways, and they do them more than just open it up for public comment on, you know, two nights a week on a Thursday. Um, they they actually do a scientific way of seeking public opinion. George, and then I move to see if we can get to a suggestion. Well, let, let me suggest a way forward um, based on what Lynn just said, based on what I've been hearing and thinking that the, the best setup would be for us to present a program in a short slide presentation with the reasons behind it um, and then the request for Paul to go out for an RFP and that we as a committee, pains me to say this, but I think we as a committee need to spend one more time going through that, maybe I would offer my services, maybe Jennifer, I don't know, but produce some kind of slideshow or presentation that we as a committee can go through together and agree on this is the program. Uh, we've, we've been throwing out bits and pieces of it all over the place, but we really don't have something in black and white um, that we can all look at and agree to or disagree. And so, and as Lynn said, doing that will also, I think, bring up naturally questions people might have that we're gonna need to answer. I think on the 15th, we're not ready to do that. Perhaps your report, your memo, Andy, would just sort of give the council a sense of where we're at at the moment. And you could orally simply, or in the report, simply tell them, we're going to make a formal presentation to you at the next meeting. And uh, we're gonna present a, a program and we're gonna, you know, we can give them a preview of what's coming, but we're not ready for prime time, I guess is what I'm saying, based on what we're seeing and hearing tonight, today. I think we still have one more thing we have to do. And that pains me to say that, but I think that's where I'm at. And, uh, and yeah, you know, and let me just add, George, what that does by having it brought up at this coming meeting, but not presented to the following, is also have other counselors forward questions to you that they think are important. And so it means at on the 19th, we're, you're you're looking at a much more robust discussion. Which is what I was thinking also, just, just to take a quick, Jennifer, because I do have a suggestion on the bylaw piece, but okay. go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's, yeah, Lynn makes an excellent point that if we have counselor questions and there'll be some discussion at the meeting on Monday, we can answer those or respond to them in our presentation on, on the 19th. But I still had a couple of comments about the report, which is excellent, but there was, so we'll have time for that. Yeah, um, my my thought about the bylaw is, is that uh, at this point, maybe we should just, uh, even though I'm in this, again, peculiar position as being both sponsor of the bylaw, one of the sponsors and chairs, Asked by the sponsors, uh, including um, sponsors that are not in this meeting today, to see if there's an agreement on any on the bylaw to be presented, and um, it would be a recommendation to the committee. It would not be a decision because I think that it belongs to the committee. But that would move the the question of. Uh, at least to the, the initial bylaw um, along to the next stage. And that we would try and do that um, quickly so that there's plenty of time to for the committee to look at it, even though we don't have another meeting scheduled. Possibly, I don't, I think we have to talk about meeting schedule in a minute. Uh, 
So that would be, and also to think about the presentation, there would be more detail and would um, address some of the questions that might come up with just in the initial discussion. So give some thought to that. Jennifer, what were you gonna say about the report? Yeah, well, thank you for writing. I mean, it's an excellent report. Um, a couple of things, I think at one point, this is just a typo, you mentioned the July 13th discussion. I think it's on page three in the middle. So I think you meant June 13th. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then we- I, I was trying to get those correct and I- No, no, it's fine. I just, um, yeah. I think that then when we, the motion that we voted was that the last meeting, which was June 27th, now, I don't know that that matters, but we didn't, we had a discussion on the June 13th and then we didn't vote on that motion for the council until the 27th. I have to go back and look at it to yeah. make sure. Because it was definitely the last meeting that we voted on the motion to recommend right. the council, right. Um, and the other thing I would just wanted to ask if, oh, and then it, I think it's page two. Yeah, the June 13th discussion, sort of in the middle of the page, it refers to Zero Waste Amherst as an advocacy group that supports the goals of the proposed bylaw, but they're also the community sponsor. So maybe they can be acknowledged as the community sponsor. And then I was just, I know that, you know, on this is again the middle of page three, number five, where it discusses um, Susan Wade is the DEP municipal assistance coordinator. Did talk about that, you know, we are implementing three major changes at once. But I I thought we could also, you know, include that the Amherst Board of Health supports um, this bylaw that they would like to see us move to a town contracted system with pay as you throw fee structure and the universal compost curbside compost pickup. And that the project also has the support of, you know, 12, at least 12 different community organizations. And that the combination of the pay as you throw and the compost pickup has been seen is reported in other municipalities to have reduced uh, trash <laughs> disposal up to, you know, sometimes up to 40%. So just so it's, we sort of balance the fact that we're, because it is a heavy lift, but that we have, that there is support in the zero waste and the, through the CARP, and that there are a number of organizations in town are supporting moving in this direction. And yeah, I um, I think that there's a question that always comes up with the reports, and uh, I try and limit committee reports to what actually is discussed in committee. And if we didn't discuss the Board of Health having at one point voted to support this proposal, which it did do, but it wasn't discussed at a committee meeting, I think that's why it was submitted. Um, but I guess just for context, that's how it got to us. The It was really a recommendation, I think, from the Board of Health that they wanted to see this happen, but they didn't have the bandwidth to do it. So they asked if the council, that's my understanding of sort of the historical evolution of this, that the board of health asked if the council could move this forward since they wanted to see it happen, but didn't have the capacity they felt to do it. And I guess- It's a way of showing that there's, anyway, that's- Yeah. I guess I would have to contact person or former chair of the Board of Health to make sure that that's correct before I felt comfortable. Yeah, I'm not that. looking, I don't, I'm not trying to give you, you know, add more on your plate. I just wanted to, 
in addition to showing that there's challenges, that there's also that there's support. There's a reason why we're doing this because we really think it will help us to reach our climate action goals. Yeah, I also uh, did the uh, ECAC have a discussion of it. I think they might have. But again, that's something that needs to be checked into just to confirm. Uh, Councilor Ryan? Yeah, that, that item struck me as well with Susan Waite. Um, because it's not really clear what, what it's telling us. Um, these three things are intimately interconnected. So it's not like they're three totally different things they're trying to do all at once. There are three things that are int intimately connected to the overall goal of what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm not sure what, you know, I, I would just take it out myself, but um, if it's in here, it's it's not really, you know, is she saying these three things are really hard to do, so maybe you should only do one of them. I mean, you suggest that we could do, develop them in a kind of implementation plan, but I don't see how you could do the th these three things. Either do them all at once to achieve your goal, or you just don't do it. Um, so it's a small point, maybe you just leave it in, but I, I don't really see how this is adding to the the discussion. Um, you may disagree, but I, you know. Yeah, because I was, I guess I wasn't sure as to what she meant in the sense that is she was she making an observation and that was it, or was she recommending, was she suggesting that we recognize the complexity of it and um, that we implement in pieces, but commit to the pieces? Yeah. Um, so maybe a reason not to put it in because we're not sure what, I mean, it's not even advice. I mean, she's just pointing out a fact. Um, and, but people reading it might take it as saying, you know, why are you trying to do such a complicated thing all at once? Shouldn't you do it in stages? Well, she doesn't seem to be saying that. Um, it's not clear what she's saying. So since we're not clear on what she's saying, maybe we should just take it out. Or you can go to her and ask her. Yeah, no, I would think, I think, I think you should just what I was thinking was. Yeah, I think. Go ahead, Jennifer. No, I agree with George. I think, and then I, you, I would would not need, I guess, to have all the suggestions I just made in there. I think we we take that out because it's yeah, they're inextricably all three of those. You can't do one without the other. And I think in terms of the timeline, we're saying yeah, we know it's going to take time to implement this program, but I would ask if we could acknowledge Zero Waste Amherst as a community sponsor. Okay. Um, it, I have to remind you that we are um, under that time squeeze problem with Thursday uh, before a council meeting. And so there's very little time. For example, I'm not gonna be able to really do a review and add in today's discussion. And I have to leave it as to where it is. Okay. Um, but I will make propose those changes, try and write that up, send it to you this afternoon if I can, um, and then uh, see if we can get, um, I'll just do the normal process of seeing if there are any objections, otherwise make a decision to get it onto the council, because um, we do know that there's a lot of pressure from the council, they want reports um, Two days in, in two days in advance, and I think we need to adhere to that. Um, so why don't we do this? Um, let's see if I can um, work with the other sponsors with in, on a very quick timeline to see if we can get to an agreement on bylaw. We are going to ask that it not be on the agenda for the meeting other uh, next week, the council meeting for decision that it only be considered as a interim report from the committee for action in August. And that we revise the report and proceed. Um, 
Boom. Two questions. Uh, do you want it on the agenda as a discussion item, or do you just want it when you give your reports? I'm actually considering that I think it should be a discussion item so we make sure we get it done. And it's just a preliminary, you know, something. Because normally it would come at the end of the agenda and we have to go into executive session on, my, on Monday night. Um, and that executive session is probably going to take about an hour and a half. If you're willing to put it on this discussion item. Yeah, I, I'd like to put it on. It's just a brief discussion item. And actually, that's the opportunity for you to briefly say something about it and then solicit questions from counselors that they might want answered. And then the other reason I raised my hand is many, several of you have continually referred to this outstanding presentation at the MMA. Is there any way to get a video of that presentation? or the slides. We do have the slides. Great. I want I'd like to make sure that those are made available to the council um for this for the upcoming meeting as well. Yeah, I don't think that the uh, MMA records its sessions itself. They only make the slides available as supplemental material that goes into their own website. Mm -hmm. Which is why we have it. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. That's all. Okay. So is there anything else that we need to talk about today? Do you feel like we have enough closure for now, Paul? Yeah, I think so. I think this is a good approach. Um, I guess the question I have um the whether you're going to meet on July 25th or not, because we will have nobody from uh, DPW available. If you're going to talk about roads, Jason and Guilford are both on vacation that week. Yes, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I was going to bring make sure that that was uh, obvious to the committee. We are not going to be able to talk about West Street, and we certainly there's no need to talk about the roundabout because. That uh, the funding isn't in place for that yet. It's it's in Tracy mentioned that in public comment. Uh, so I think that the uh, if we meet on the twenty fifth, it would really be uh, not about roads at all. It would solely uh, to give us an opportunity to try and put together this presentation. Uh, discussion for the waste hauler and possibly limit the time of the meeting so that we uh, don't make it a longer meeting than necessary. Um, that's Ryan. I think Andy, you just said what I was hoping to hear that um, the focus of our next meeting should be on reviewing the two bylaws, deciding which one, if either is the one that we're going to go with or present as the uh, working document, document work in progress. And uh, that we would hopefully at the end of that meeting have a pretty clear sense of what the presentation is going to look like, what the program that we're proposing to the council is going to look like. And what I'm hoping that you will make clear to the council on the 15th is that that's where we're headed. We're headed, we want to come to you at the next council meeting and present uh, uh, the program that we'd like the town to head towards. Um, and our job will be on the 25th to, as a committee to agree with what we come up with. And then I don't know if we vote on it or whatever, but that we're satisfied with it. Um, so that's something I think that would keep us busy and out of trouble. And it would be okay if the uh, sponsors, closing sponsors, not present at this meeting <clears throat> have a record have as something to present to the committee but it would only be a presentation to this committee it belongs to the committee not to the sponsors at this point i guess i'm a little worried about that but maybe that i'll just have to deal with it next time i i really think it's now up to us to figure out what you know uh, we want to do with the two documents we have in front of us and just be so we're clear the five of us and we're clear on what 
we're proposing, we want to propose to the council as where we were headed. Those are the two things that matter to me. Um, I'm happy to have the sponsors attend, um, but uh, I'm not sure what, uh, yeah, I think it's more an issue for us, the five of us, looking at what's in front of us, these two documents, and coming to an agreement about a plan is what matters. I agree that it belongs to the committee. Um, so what's the value of, I mean, having them come and offer yet further amendments, suggestions, ideas, I mean, the, if if they have any, if there are any comments, they would have to come in, in public comment? prior to the meeting, yeah, not okay. at the yeah, meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so I think we have a way of moving forward, and we know what we're going to be doing. Uh, I will uh, try and keep the report changes limited. Um, so that we can, uh, in the, I'll get to, the, to you as a track changes based on uh, the draft that was in the packet for today's meeting, which is draft three. Uh, it'll be based on that. And uh, I'll get it to the committee so that you can send afterwards. Uh, so is there anything else we want to talk about on waste taller? And if not, then I would want to go just spend a couple minutes on um, traffic issues, mostly on uh, questions for follow-up. And I don't know, Paul, if you or Guilford have any um, answers on this, but uh, what is happening on Henry Street, if there's any information on what the next steps are for Henry Street and because uh, uh, there was the traffic calming and when the posting changes to 20. So that was uh, that was the, the Henry Street issues that I had. So the, for the posting on Henry Street, we're waiting for some signs. We ran out of money. Um, so we're ordering the signs and the signs have been placed on order. Uh, the two new signs will be coming in shortly. We have the feedback sign and we've laid out where we're putting everything. So we're just waiting for those 20 mile safety zone signs to arrive. Um, and that's what that is. This fall, we'll work on some traffic calming out there. There is a parent at the school who's quite Throwing us a lot of ideas, we can mush around and come up with something, I'm pretty sure, but uh, uh, that's where that is. So we'll work on the traffic coming over the fall for the construction, probably in the spring or summer, and that'll be the whole whole package. Any members of the committee have questions that they would like to raise on Henry Street? Another question that I had uh, was that when we had the uh, recommendation that came from the discussion that started with the students from Ford River about uh, extending the hours at which the uh, light is flashing that makes it a lower speed limit to be all times that school is in session as opposed to the uh, morning and the afternoon. And I think that where we left it was is that that was really an administrative decision uh, the, from the executive. Have you thought about that at all? The answer is not yet. And that's what the answer is. From my standpoint, it actually has to be voted by council. It cannot be an administrative action. So if you wish to do that, we can draw, we can put something together to submit to council to change those times. The council, the council sets the school zones. And when you, they set the school zones, the times are in the school zones. Are there any other school zones that we need? Um, that we have times that vary from the, what is now at Fort River? 
Well, we would probably, if you if you want to go this route, we would do all three of the elementary schools. And then because the rule has changed, you can put a school zone in front of the middle school and the high school. So then you would have two new ones and have the three existing ones. Actually, there's four because there's two speed, there's two school zones for Crocker Farm. Paul? Well. Yeah, just to add to that. So I think, you know, um, we check with the town attorney whether this is a, a council decision or not, but um, there are limitations on what you can't just say school zone 24 hours a day. You have to do it um, when it's when when students are passing and crossing streets and things like that. There's some guidance, at least for when you should have a school zone and you can't have it vague either you can't say whenever students are present it has to be specified time periods and that uh permits enforcement to be done properly um so it it you know given that it might re does it might require council action um so there there have to be agreed upon time frames when this will be when these um speed limits are enforced but that's not on the agenda today so we should if you're going to have it as an agenda item let us know when you want to talk about that Thank you. Well, that is about all we can do on that for the reason that you've stated. Uh, the committee needs to decide, and the other is whether, um, you know, we, we, and I will put it on a future agenda. I asked TAC to also provide input on this. And uh, just for information purposes, not for discussion, uh, there may be a recommendation, according to what I understand now, about the role of tech and teacher and restructuring. And but that's not on the agenda for today. It's just advice, just information for future meeting. And uh, I don't think that that would come up at the next meeting. Bob. Yeah, I, I just wanted to. Um put out there that um, I'm very interested in what results we have from examining um, roads, the streets that currently are posted at 30, uh, and whether that's a statutory posting or uh, it was done through some uh, engineering or traffic study. I think it, that would be, my understanding is if it was statutory, it can automatically be put at 25 instead of 30. Um, so that would, that would, uh, be a very great help. I know to some people in, in my, some, some of my constituents have requested that very, that very thing. So nothing is, you know, I just put it out there that, you know, maybe in a, in a future meeting, we can get a, we can get a schedule or a report on that. Yeah. Uh it's a good point, and uh, there is some vagueness, and I assume that uh, Guilford, your department is going to have to give some thought to that, as to if there's a 38 mile an hour posting currently on the street, whether it stays at 30 or um, needs to be changed to 25, uh, requires research on why that sign is there. So a quick answer is that most of them were put up and most of them were put up in 2021. And the reason for them being put up, we have no, we don't have, uh, they were just approved in 2021. So most of the streets that have a 30 mile an hour sign on it, there was no statutory speed limit sign there. So, and when we go to the 25 town, we post the 25 town wide, we would just take those signs down. No 25 mile an hour sign will go up. Right. Did you mean 2021, Guilford? No, 2000, 2001, sorry. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> before I got here, yeah, it's it was <laughs> right before the right before the DPW superintendent retired and about uh, two years before the police chief retired, it was was when it happened. That's right. So in the spirit of future agenda items, um, 
and it seems like you might have been hinting at that, Andy, if I understood you, um, but it involves Paul and uh, his proposal about a traffic commission. That's something I'm quite interested in, and I'm hoping that will come sooner rather than later. Um, and so just, just putting it out there is something that I hope uh, we'll get around to uh, at some point soon. Yeah, I mean, that's something if, if Paul has a proposal for us to consider, then it goes on the agenda. And so. Well, since he's here, I thought he might hear me. Yeah, so we're, you know, I think the, the idea was that um, that would, re that I'm going to review it with the TAC and have that conversation with them, see how long, how many meetings they want to talk about it, and then bring it back to the T. It's been referred to the TSO, and that's where it lives right now. No, it's it's uh, still in the council. The council voted oh, so in the to, council? to send it back to you. They haven't referred it to TSO. Ah, okay. Thank you. That was the that was the outcome of the original discussion. It's been a while. <laughs> yes, it has. Okay, so uh, that said, is there anything else that uh, committee committee members uh, wish to raise? Uh, under general traffic safety, public way matters that they'd like to bring forward since we did say other matters as may arise. Okay, seeing none, uh, then I think that uh, right now we are planning to go forward with the meeting on the 25th, but with the understanding that there will be no traffic discussion at that meeting because both Guilford and Jason are not available, that it will be, we will try and keep it uh, contained in time and uh, it'll be on ways taller. I have no other business that I've thought of. Does anybody else have anything that's unanticipated that you'd like to raise? Because if not, then I would take a motion to adjourn. So move. Your second. 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 Okay, it's been moved uh, by Bob and Jennifer has seconded to adjourn. And just a quick uh, vote and so that we can uh, get this uh, done. And we'll start with Bob Hegner. Aye. Councilor Lord. Aye. Councilor Ryan. Aye. Manai and Jennifer. Yes. And it's unanimous. And uh, Return. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.